Greetings, and welcome to yet another Lazy Game Reviews greetings at the beginning of a video. And welcome to another video. <laughs> In case you didn't realize, that is what you're watching. What we have here today is another Sims 3 town, which has been made available by the people who work on these at Electronic Arts. And this is Lunar Lakes, made available as an add-on for The Sims 3 currently purchasable on The Sims 3 online store. And it was posted there, February 11th of this final year of humanity's existence, 2012. Now, if you've seen my other videos about these store towns, you'll know that I am really not a big fan of them. I felt frickin' ripped off by Barnacle Bay and Hidden Springs. Not because they were necessarily bad towns, although Barnacle Bay kind of was, but because they were so freaking expensive. $20, $25. But then comes along something genuinely unique in Lunar Lakes. And I've got to say, as soon as I saw what this was, I was pretty intrigued. I mean, the alien kind of landscape that this is supposed to have is pretty awesome at least in my sci-fi enjoying mind, but I still had no plans on buying it or reviewing it. Until somebody awesome known as Kitana514 gifted the game to me on The Sims 3 store. So many huge thanks to you, individual who I assume enjoys what I do, because now I am doing this. See what you've done. All right, so first things first. This town isn't really a big surprise as far as cost goes. It's 2,450 Sim points and that equates to almost 25 US dollars for what is essentially though a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view, no one to tell us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming, okay. Is the town actually any good? Well, as you can see in the background, it looks freaking awesome, at least if you think this looks freaking awesome. This is both a good and a bad thing. Lunar Lakes is a very unique looking town. It is based on a moon somewhere in the universe that has been populated by Sims, apparently, that crash-landed on the place a long time ago in a galaxy right here. So everything has a very geometric sci-fi look to it. It's evident on everything from the landscape to the roads to the designs that are in the ground, and of course the lunar aspect itself with all the craters. Even the sky is freaking awesome. You've got shooting stars and another moon. Well, I guess that's the planet that you're the moon of. Of course, this does make some things stand out somewhat awkwardly, like the cars that Sims drive around. They're just regular cars. So it would have been kind of cool if they went all out and made futuristic moon cars or something to have on here. I guess we'll leave that up to modders. But otherwise, this look is apparent in everything, and I like it as far as aesthetics go. The house designs in particular are fantastic. They're just freaking impossible. And I like that because, you know, sometimes you just get tired of the same old ranch houses and the same old McMansions and all that crap that's in the normal Sims games and other towns. And this is a nice change of pace. These look kind of like Frank Lloyd Wright's Acid Trip or something. There are also some new objects to enjoy, several little town things that are just kind of there, like some lamp posts, some pretty cool looking mailboxes actually, some doors, some windows, a bench or two, crap like that. None of these are particularly amazing, but they do add a nice little bit of sci-fi flair to everything else that is flaringly sci-fi. There are also some create a sim items, although not very many, just a few sets of clothing that look kind of meh. I guess if you want to go all out with your sci-fi role-playing, go ahead, but I don't really like these. They make my sim look like a cyborg Spider-Man made sausage. There's also the Tree of Prosperity, which is an entirely new so-called premium object that is included with Lunar Lakes. And this yeah, is a it. tree that prospers and lives long, presumably, and helps you prosper and other Vulcan jokes. By giving you skills at certain times of day, you eat fruit and do things to it imbue it, or whatever they want to call it here, and it changes shape and color and gives you skills. Much like the Fountain of Youth in Hidden Springs, this is pretty much just there as a gimmick. It's something that looks cool, it's something that's a little bit different than other things, but it's nothing that you don't have in the regular game in some other form. Now what's not so great about it? Well, several things, unfortunately. If you look around the town, you'll see some really, really unique looking buildings, but then you'll see a lot of these things that I guess are called warp gates. They're essentially just rabbit holes that take the place of the regular buildings in the game, like the grocery stores and restaurants. The thing is, they all look identical. For the most part, they are very, very lame. 
Like, it really does seem like somebody designing this got quite lazy, and although I can understand that, it is unfortunate, because the other designs that are in the town are just awesome. I would have liked to have seen some of these look a little bit more unique instead of just a standard warp gate. Also kind of stupid is the fact that there are not very many new objects at all when it comes down to it. And in fact, some of them aren't actually usable, at least they don't seem to be, like these crystals that are actually advertised on the store's page. They're apparently hidden, and I've seen some people try to unlock them with various success, but that's just kind of stupid. Why advertise a new object if you can't use it? Also, the lots that are scattered around the town are only base game lots, so you're not going to have some of the stuff from ambitions like consignment stores and fire stations. You're going to have to place those yourself, and as a result, they're going to look really, really out of place on your new sci-fi lunar lake town. And of course, the biggest drawback to this is the fact that it costs $25. To me, that is simply not worth what you're getting here. This is just a town. It's got some cool new items, and it looks very unique. But remember, it is, well, very unique. It's both an up and a down. If you don't want this all the time, then you're not going to play it all the time. And to me, for $25, I'm going to want to play this content quite a bit. And after a couple hours, I was like, all right, whatever, I'm just going back to the regular looking towns and sims and houses that don't look like something out of a rejected 1940s sci-fi drama. It kind of breaks the immersion a little bit, I guess, to be on something that looks as ridiculous as this. Again, not to say that it's a bad town, because overall, I do like it. I just think that it costs too freaking much. Price this down to about $10, and this is a no-brainer, at least if you like towns that are absolutely fantastical in appearance. <laughs>